Good afternoon, everyone. Just want to bring you a quick video message today. Another one. Uh, I've done one this morning. I just need to upload it. But um, this message here is going to be for the saints, the saved, the washed, the forgiven. Just want to come on here and tell you you are worthy to take communion. I've been work, working around reading a little bit of First Corinthians last several weeks and and I was always curious because you hear some folks when they give communion they'll say you know they'll explain what communion is about the body about the blood and then then they'll say examine yourselves so you won't take so you will not take communion unworthily and some you know religions like like Catholicism, they want they would like for you to go to confession before you take communion. And so I, I started taking a look at these verses to see what it says in its proper context in which it appears. So we can go back and let's get some context going here. First Corinthians were riddled, or the Corinthians were riddled with problems. And Paul is addressing, you know, in, in chapter 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, head dresses and and head coverings, and and then he goes on to First uh, Corinthians chapter uh, eleven, starting in verse eighteen, I believe, and he starts talking about the Lord's Supper and talking about coming together, and he says that there are uh, divisions and heresies among you. So my mind went to heresies, you know, I said, oh, that's probably false doctrine, false. You know, what, what does he mean by that? You know, my mind went to a little bit different direction. So, well, no, I want to do a word study on heresies first. And basically, in this context here, or in this way, way, way Paul is using this word, is disun disunion. Of course, if you are <laughs> not rooted and grounded in the word of God, and if you think there you can you can be saved another way, you know, by work salvation or repenting of sins, yeah, that can cause a disunion disunion but basically in this is disunion so you have a group of people that really can't come together there um, looks like looks like when you read the, the uh, first Corinthians it looks like they were all over the place you know so Paul is trying to trying to restore some order here and he says you know he says there's heresies among you, you know, when you come together you know you're not really waiting on one another to eat you know some of you are are eating and, and, and some of you are drunken. It almost sounds like to me, I saw a scene. When I was reading it, I saw a scene of these people just, they're coming in the, into, into their uh, the church hungry and they're just eating and making making fools of themselves. And maybe even drinking. And he said, some of you are drunken, you know? Some of, some, of, some of you are drunk. So I see people with lack of self-control. And if you read the end of end of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he says, he says, I pray that you will, he says, he's the words tarry on one another, means to wait on, a, on one another. Wait till everybody gets here and let's have the Lord's Supper worthily. You are worthy. But he says, after, after he says, you know, he explains about the, about the, about the Lord's Supper, about the body, about the blood. And he said, whoever takes it unworthily, meaning if you do a study on unworthily, it is irreverently, irreverent. So you're going in there. He says, basically what I see in these passages, you have a group of people. Some of them are, are hungry and they're just wanting bread and they're just wanting, they're just wanting to drink this, uh, drink the blood, of, you know, drink the wine. And, and maybe they're doing it, you know, out of, they're, they're doing it out of irreverence for God, you know, or could they be unsaved as possible? He does not say that, but he he is telling them if you do it unworthily, you're going to be guilty of the body and the blood. I really honed in on that too, because that's like, oh, that's interesting. Because you have to, re so I have to go back to the gospel, preach the gospel to myself. Say, okay, what is the gospel? You know, we are saved by grace through faith. It's not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works as any man should boast. The gospel, that's the summary, the gospel is the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Basically, when you do communion, you are preaching the gospel in, in essence. That's what I see. 
please com comment in the comment section if you see otherwise or if I'm off on this. Of course, this is the first pass. You know, I'm, it's, you know it's good to study it out. But I want to tell you, saints, that you are worthy. If you, if you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, if you believe that, you believe the death, burial, and resurrection for the remissions of all your sins, past, present, future, you are worthy to take communion. Does not happen. What I see in these verses, he does he does not say, oh, you better make sure you don't sin on communion day. <laughs> he didn't say that. He says, when you take a body, when you take this bread, you break the bread, you, you, th you think, you meditate on Jesus, what he did. He broke his body for you on that cross. And when you take this blood, this cup, this is the blood of Jesus Christ, which cleanses all sin, which, cl which cleanses you. This is what I'm seeing, what this is supposed to mean. He says, be, don't take it unworthily. You're, you're doing this irreverently. And he says, you could bring, he used condemnation on you. You know, so what I'm, what I'm thinking is this. When he says you will bring condemnation onto yourself, you'll be guilty of the body and the blood when you do it irreverently and you know what you're doing. You are, what I see this by association you are the same as those people that crucified Christ on the cross. You are aligning yourself up with those people that, with those big Roman soldiers with the cat of nine tails whipping Jesus on that whipping post. He, that's what I see. I see by him saying that, you are, by association, agreeing with his crucifixion. When, 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 when Jesus was being... Uh, beaten and his beard being plucked out and with his, the crown of thorns on his head. He says, you're no different. That's what I see. That's what I'm seeing in those passages today. So, again, I'd like to hear some thoughts on this. On this, But I'm, I'm saying, when I, when I think about the gospel of Jesus Christ, when I think about who we are and whose we are, and we are seated in heavenly places, we are worthy to take communion. Right, so, and I've heard I've heard uh, Protestant preachers say, "Oh, you better examine yourself, whether you be, you know, well, yeah, if you're coming in and and, and you know, you examine your behavior, you examine your motive of taking the Lord. So, if you're hungry, that's what Paul's saying. If you're hungry, don't you have houses to eat in? Don't you have, you know, don't don't, don't you have basically, don't you have supper, you guys? Are you guys that hungry? You coming here?" You know, this is what I see in these passages. He's saying, don't, you know, aren't you filling your belly at home? You come in here, you're acting like a fool, you know, basically. And and you guys are causing causing divisions in here. You don't want to wait on each other, you know. And you, you know, some of them want to take the Lord's Supper right away. And some of them don't want to wait. And some of them wants to wait and have it properly. Yeah, I see a, I see a mess here in these verses. And I think these verses have been taken out of context to put guilt and shame on people. Well, no, you can't take communion because you may have sinned that day. Well, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I have no more sin to pay for. I have no more sin to pay for. My, my sins have been paid for and nailed to the cross. So I am worthy, worthy to take communion. And sometimes I do. Sometimes I take communion by myself. Uh, sometimes at lunch, I'll take communion. I'll look at my peanut butter jelly sandwich and my good old southern sweet tea you know and I go through thank you Lord for breaking your body for me and I'll take a bite of my sandwich and then I think about what Jesus blood did the atonement what he did there the exchange process on that cross and um, when I think about that and take a drink of my, my drink my, my soda whatever Sweet tea. So I think those those verses have been pulled out out of context, and basically Paul's. I just see a big mess that Paul is trying to straighten out um, for the first Corinthians because we know, as we know, he's addressing m multiple problems in the, the church of Corinth. So, yeah, unworthily means irreverent, and if you take the Lord's Supper irreverently. You know, where is your mind? Where's your mind going there? And why would you do that? And he's just saying, you won't, you'll, you'll be guilty of the body and the blood. I see that as 
them lining the person that's taking the Lord's Supper irreverently, unworthily, is lining themselves up by association with those with those Roman soldiers, with those people that judged judged um, Jesus and commissioned him to the cross. And um, God forbid, you know. But anyway, that's my first pass on this. I may see something different. I'm going to keep reading and meditating on it. But I've been, you know, looking over for a while now. I just, you know, I'm thinking um, this is what Paul is trying to get at. He says, just remember, you know, who you are and whose you are. And, I, and that's what I'm saying here to you today. You are worthy to take communion because you you have no more sin to pay for if you placed your trust in the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ alone for your salvation. That's it. And it's simple. But anyway, I just want to bring you this message today. I love you and hope you have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.